Welcome to TWD Symbolism Analysis, hosted by me at TWD Music Box Mystery, also known as author Lisa K. Hill. This is where we totally geek out about the recurring symbols we see in the show, what they mean, how they connect, and what they foreshadow. So if you're a TWD geek, come over to the dark side. We have Daryl. Good morning, Bethelers. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of clocks today. Honestly, clocks are a really complicated symbol in TWD world, but I'm going to try to give you kind of a foundation for them. The first time we, as TDers, really paid attention to clocks was in Slabtown because they're focused on in a really obvious way there. Beth wakes up and we see the ticking of the clock and it alternates between her face and her eyes and the face of the clock. So it was a really obvious pay attention to the symbol kind of moment. And I know that after that episode aired, somebody specifically asked Gimple if the clocks were important or meant something. And he said, yes, he didn't tell us what they meant or how to interpret them, but he did say yes. So the first I know interpretation that was pretty prevalent in the fandom was that they represented episode numbers. So in that episode, we see the second hand ticking around the clock and we see four, five, and then it, it shifts to Beth looking out the window and then it does seven, eight, and then it shifts back to her again. And then we see it tick past 10. So they were thinking that that represented the important episodes for her in season five. And that sort of does hold up because she was in episode four, which was Slab Town. And then she was in seven and eight that was crossed and Coda where she was shot. And then it, it ticks toward the 10, which is them where the music box woke up. So as though to say, those were the really important episodes in her arc for season 10. So I can actually get behind that explanation, but I don't think that that is all the clock meant. I think there was a lot more meaning to the clock than that. We have tried multiple ways to try and interpret these clocks over the seasons. Sometimes we believe that the time on the clock really is pointing to an episode number. So there is a 10:16 clock behind Daryl when he tries to escape the sanctuary. And I really, at this point, firmly believe that that points toward episode 10:16, which is the finale of the season. It's coming up. So I'm excited and see what that brings us. But back in episode, um, let's see, I think it was 707 when Carl goes to the sanctuary, there's a clock behind Jesus that reads 930. And so we were going, okay, well, we could interpret that as 906, episode 906, since that's where the hands are pointing. But it's also halfway through the hour, so perhaps it should be 908. And as it turned out, that that clock did point toward 908 because that is the episode in which Jesus died. So that got me thinking about the clocks and I started doing some math, which I know, I know math is not everybody's favorite thing. But I do believe that a lot of the times we shouldn't be looking at the specific numbers to equal episodes because obviously there are only 12 numbers on a clock and there are 16 episodes in a season for the most part. So one of the things I've been doing lately is taking 60 minutes, which is an hour, right? An hour of the clock and dividing it by 16 episodes and you get 3.75. So every 3.75 minutes of the hour represents one episode. So you can take that and look at the time and sort of divide it out and figure out what episode it might be pointing to. But I will say that even doing that doesn't always work. So the bottom line is that there are multiple ways to interpret the clocks and the writers specifically don't always do it in the same way. And it's it's to confuse us. It's to make sure that we don't always know exactly what the clock means because they know their fans are smart. And if it was super obvious, we'd all figure it out. And then we would understand what they're foreshadowing all the time. And they don't want that. They're trying to be mysterious. So you kind of have to apply a couple of different methods to the clocks and see if you can figure out what it's pointing to. Okay, so there's the 1010 clock that's beside Beth that says get well soon. Because of that, we were obviously looking really closely at episode 1010, but there are a lot of ways to interpret that clock. It's very common for, and you don't see this as much anymore because analog clocks since the digital revolution are not as much of a thing, but when you used to see clocks sitting on a shelf or even watches that were, you know, had not been bought yet and were sitting on a shelf waiting to be bought, you often saw them set at 1010. And there is a reason for that. 1010 is kind of mythologically the time at which it is believed that many famous people were assassinated. So people like Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, things like that. Now, obviously that's not true. They were not all assassinated at exactly 1010, but it's just sort of a legend that goes along with famous assassinations. So that's part of the reason that it's just, it's kind of become a tradition to set clocks at that time. And, and there are other reasons too that go along with the legend. You can look it up articles on why clocks are set at 1010 and you'll find a bunch of interesting things. And it's just kind of this weird quirky thing that people do in our culture. And like I 
I said, a lot of people don't even know about it anymore because not very many people wear wristwatches anymore because we all have digital phones and things. So I believe, it, it's just my personal belief that that 10, 10 clock was a foreshadow of Beth being shot. I don't actually know that there's a ton of resurrection symbolism in that, but she hadn't been shot yet. And so it was, you know, none of us were thinking she was going to get shot in the head and die when she was waking up at Grady. That's not what we were thinking at all. So it, it was a foreshadow of her coming arc. And that does not mean that she wasn't resurrected or that she didn't live through it. It was just that, that it was pointing specifically to her being shot in the head, much like all of these famous figures, you know, again, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, who all were unfortunately shot in the head. That said, let me give a caveat that we have looked into the 1010 symbolism exclusively, especially when it comes to episode numbers like 210, 1010, 1002, things like that. And it's a lot more than just her being shot as well. There's a lot of interesting symbolism in those episodes that point to resurrection. But as far as the 1010 clock on the wall goes, I think it points to her being shot. And then you can also point out that it says get well soon, suggesting that after she gets shot, she will get well. So you can kind of interpret it a lot of different ways, but it does all point to the same thing, which is that she will get shot, but that she will live. Then there's the main reason that I point out that I think the 1010 itself represents her getting shot is that we've also seen the opposite of that. So if you look at the way the hands are positioned on the face of a clock, both of them are pointed upward and outward, right? Well, we've also seen the opposite clock where the hands are pointed downward and outward. In other words, the clock usually reads 820. And so I believe that the 1010 10 clock represents getting shot and the opposite, the one that points down, represents resurrection. Now we've seen that clock many times throughout the show. I'm not even going to remember all of them right now, but I know we've seen it at Oceanside and I know that we saw it during what I always called Rick's old man coda. During season eight, we kept seeing that futuristic shot of when Judith was older and Rick woke up and he had the longer white beard. And as it turned out, it's, it's not very correct to call it Rick's old man coda because it was actually Carl's dream, but we didn't know that at the time. That's just what I started calling it. And I know we saw the clock there, which was a foreshadow of Rick's, you know, people thinking Rick was going to die and that he was going to get a death fake out and actually be resurrected. So again, there's a lot of ways to read these clocks. Another one that I know we've seen a lot is we've seen a 510 clock. I know that we saw a 510 clock in episode 509 with Tyrese's death hallucination. And we also saw a 510 clock around Glenn just before his death fake out. So in those cases, I think they do point to episode 510 and the fact that the music box woke up and you know the one that we saw around Glenn didn't really have anything to do with Beth it had to do with Glenn and that he was going to get a death fake out but that was actually how we knew that Glenn wasn't going to die because we were going okay well if it says 510 and Glenn really dies then that means we're wrong and the music box doesn't mean anything and Beth's not alive but lo and behold what happened he lived so this is just like I said a, a very general foundation on the clocks and keep a lookout for them. We saw one just recently for Eugene that was interesting and it's something that we always pay attention to when we see the clocks. So have fun clock watching!